Yes, hi. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session. And I should say, to get started, you know what to expect. We are not going to give you a demo. So if you're here for a fabric demo, literally, you're going to be a bit disappointed. What we want to do is give you an update on where we are with fabric, and then, uh, uh, you know, so we can have a Q&A session at the end. So in terms of, you know, the tutorials, on the other end, it's pretty simple to get started. We put a lot of effort into uh, the uh, both the tutorials, which we have a, now an extensive set of tutorials that take you from very beginning of how to get started all the way to deploying, you know, uh, uh, a blockchain network in production. And in parallel to that, we have a whole set of samples. The samples went through a major re revamping uh, exercise where basically, you know, the way Fabric Samples came about initially was fairly organic. A bunch of different uh, examples. Uh, a lot of them initially were based on some program that developers were writing as they were implementing features that we then turned into samples. And the whole thing didn't make much sense. So what we did is basically we went through uh, different features and said, okay, we need a sample that, you know, kind of take through a, a progressive curve where we can show all the different uh, features that they might want to use. And we wanted to uh, also exhibit practices because, you know, prior to that, samples didn't always do the right thing. We found out that, people, you know, it was misleading people. They were ending up uh, developing the applications following what they saw in samples. And even and then we had to say, oh, but you shouldn't do that for a production. So what we did this time is we tried to really show best practices in the samples. And so you can see some of the examples there. We believe they actually, um, you know, cover a, a pretty wide range of uh, type of applications you would typically find on blockchain. And you may actually very well, you know, find a, a good starting point for your own application. Okay, thanks, Darno. Um, so I'm going to segue into some of the other things we've been doing the past year, talk about some of our releases since the last global forum. Uh, we've got a, had a new big release earlier last year, uh, version 2 of Fabric, and we have a version 2.2, .2, which is the long-term support release of the 2.x stream. Uh, and there's a lot of new features in 2.x. Um, so first and foremost, we have decentralized governance of smart contracts now. This means you can have policies that dictate which organizations must agree before a smart contract is deployed or updated. Or, if, for example, you might change the endorsement policy for a contract. So there's policies around that now. And then you can also use the same kind of architecture, same patterns uh, for your own user chain codes as well. So you can use some of these features in 2.x uh, to come to agreements and approvals in your own chain codes uh, if you want to implement you know business you know business you know business, you know, business synchronous business processes in your chain codes uh, you can do that through these same mechanisms also there's private data enhancements so a lot of people might know private data collections uh, that came in earlier releases there's enhancements there so that you can share private data on a need to know basis uh, and you can use hashes to verify that data uh, if you want to share that with other organizations and there is collection level endorsement policies that can override the chain code level endorsement policies. So that if you want to protect rights to a certain private data collection, you can now do that with the collection level endorsement policies. And then finally, there's an external chain code launcher and builder. Uh, this eliminates the Docker and Docker requirements. Uh, so your, your peer does not have to have access to the Docker daemon to spin up uh, a new chain code, uh, which is a really good thing. So some vendors are, have added other options uh, for building and running chain codes. Okay, and then um, later uh, in November of 2020, we released the Fabric 2.3. Uh, two major features here. First one is managing an ordering service without a system channel. This lets you join uh, orderers to a channel similar to how you've always been able to, to add uh, peers to a channel. Uh, and you no longer need the system channel. So there is some level of centralization required there. Um, there was some issues around private administration where all the orders knew about all the other channels that were being created and so on. Now you can do that with more privacy, more scalability, and you can easily, more easily manage your ordering nodes. 
And then the second big feature in 2.3 is the ledger snapshot ability. This lets you snapshot peer channels and, and including things like the state database for a, for a channel. And you can use this snapshot in uh, various ways. First of all, you can join new peers to a channel based on the snapshot. Um, that's a lot quicker uh, than having a, a peer start from the genesis block and process all blocks, you know, if, if you've got millions of blocks out there. And also, of course, doesn't take up all the storage that millions of blocks would take up if you join from a later snapshot. And the snapshots can also let you make sure you, your peers are in a consistent state, both you know within your own organization and across other organizations. Uh, sometimes you want to make sure that your peers are in, in, are in a consistent state, and you can use these snapshots uh, somewhat as a checkpoint uh, to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Okay, and then the release we're working on this year is a 2.4 release. We released a first version of this as an alpha in April. And the big new feature in the Fabric 2.4 is the Fabric Gateway. The Fabric Gateway is a new component that can run inside the peer. And it's uh, similar to some of the code that was in the SDKs previously. Uh, basically, this is the logic that handles getting endorsements from various peers and then submitting a transaction to the ordering service. All this uh, used to be done on the client side and, the, and your application side SDK. Uh, but all this logic is now uh, sitting on the peer if you use the gateway. And this uh, allows a, a few things. Uh, there's now a lot of consistency uh, across the SDKs. There's no longer uh, duplicate code across the SDKs. Um, so the SDKs are not, are, and your applications based on the SDKs can now be more lightweight uh, and more manageable um, since they're, they're working, you know, all, all they're doing is calling in the submit transaction and then all that heavy lifting is done on the peer side. So typically you might uh, you know, call your own peer, uh, your own and your own organization's peer or another trusted uh, peer to do this heavy lifting for you. And then finally, the client only needs a single connection to the blockchain network, uh, and maybe that's a load balance connection into your own peers. But your client doesn't have to talk to all the other organizations' peers and ordering nodes, um, so it's a lot easier to manage both on the application side and on the peer node side, you don't have to open up all the ports for everybody's applications and things like that. Okay, and then a few other things. This kind of follows on from uh, what you might have heard from the keynote from Kareem Yusuf from IBM. Uh, but IBM has opened up, uh, has contributed some new labs uh, in the areas of um, tokens, uh, the smart client for off-chain agreements and exchanges, Weaver for DLT interoperability, uh, Mir BFT for Byzantine Fault Tolerant Consensus, and Fabric Private Chain Code for uh, secure and private execution of chain code using technologies such as Intel SGX. Uh, and then there was also the announcement this morning about the Fabric Operations Console from IBM's blockchain platform is now open source or will now be open sourced uh, coming soon, uh, and a support offering around that. So that's the things that we've been working on uh, in the fabric world. And I think at this point we can open it up to other questions. So there's the Q&A no. uh, tab. I don't know, Arno, are there any questions out there yet? No. Probably people to stop posting questions because there isn't any yet. <clears throat> We have quite a bit of people listening in. I see almost 30 people, so. Hopefully there'll be a few questions among them. We think so. Maybe they were all here to see a demo we are not giving. <laughs> well, if we knew they weren't gonna ask questions, we might've had time for a demo after all. Don't be shy. Ah. Oh, that's nice. It's just hard to digest everything and keep up with the great work you do. <laughs> Thank you. It is drinking like a, from a fire hose sometimes, yes. What's your view on NFT and fabric? Uh, okay, my view is uh, Fabric has had support for NFTs since the beginning, but they weren't called, necessarily called NFTs. Um, so you might know it by, you know, assets, uh, for example. 
but when you store an asset on the blockchain, you know, that's no different from an NFT. Um, if you want to talk about uh, like the, the Ethereum uh, ERC721 um, standard for NFTs, uh, we also can do that in Fabric. With, uh, we have a sample chain code that shows how to do that. Um, so that's my view is, is Fabric is entirely compatible with NFTs and have supported it since the, the very beginning. I don't know, Arno, is that your view as well? Or do you have a different view? Yeah, I, I think, I think you're right. you know, I didn't highlight that, but in the slide that I had at the beginning on samples, um, there was listed two uh, samples, actually more, three that are talking about tokens. We have UTXO account and, you know, uh, we have different types of tokens that we're actually demonstrating. This is just running on, you know, basic uh, standard uh, fabric offering. So um, there is no barrier is on fabric at all so we have more questions in the q a uh, tab now how about official support for arm systems especially the raspberry pi microcontroller right so i, I think uh there's been some discussion on that of that on the fabric mailing list i think we helped maybe it was this person uh helped get that going in their environment uh, I think the biggest challenge around all these different environments that we get asked about is supporting that from, you know, the CI perspective and all the environments that we have to maintain for that. So that's been a challenge. And so we've typically said, you know, we'll try to make the code not platform specific so that anybody can uh, support whatever they want. Um, but it's not like we're going to go uh, create Docker images for all these different platforms. And then uh, can you chain code builder again versus execution in wasm uh, okay so it's really a plug point so that you can execute any type of you can execute chain code however you like that could be in a wasm engine for example uh, but it really could be anything so there's a plug point of you know what you need to do on a peer to be able to uh, Build a chain code that's that's deployed, uh, and then how to how to run that chain code, uh, and it run, can run in two modes, kind of a traditional mode or a chain code as a service mode, where instead of the chain code connecting uh, to the peer, you can also reverse that and have your chain code running, for example, as a as a service on the cloud, uh, and then have your peers connect into that chain code. Um, so I think that's that's not. Um, exclusive of doing wasm uh, wasm is definitely an option that some people have played with uh, but there's not really you know official support for wasm in fabric at this point yeah and in fact i mean getting the external uh, uh, builder i mean it's it it actually plays better with the environment like because before uh the the chain code container is not necessarily recognized by the manager and you have difficulties with this, which are avoided when you stop using the chain code as a service and you have the, the node connecting to it instead of the other way around. Um, well, when will it be supported in Fabric LTS? We don't have that on the road. Uh, we do not have it on a roadmap. There was a, um, some folks did a technology preview of uh, how that might work, I forget if that was uh, out there on the mailing list, but there's been some prototypes of it, uh, but no formal uh, intent to put that on the roadmap at this point. All right, that's it. This people, some people are talking in the chat. Others, what about performance? Uh, that's a bit of a vague question, if I may ask. Can you be a bit more specific, James? Right, there's been some uh, performance studies uh, where people have done written research papers uh, on what, you know, the different factors around fabric performance. And uh, I can yeah. add, the fabric gateway in embedded in the peer leads to some performance improvement as well, just by the mere fact that uh, some of the uh, some of the the, the uh, transaction processing today requires several 
trips between the client and the peer, which then can be done locally. So there should be some performance improvement from that. Um, although I don't believe there was there has been any measurements done yet. This is you know an ongoing uh, working performance. We're always trying to find ways to improve it. to the q and a tab any per oh, well it's kind of the same uh, question any performance scalability number on the uh, hlf 2x so we have numbers to share uh no it was the performance ended up being about the same on 2x uh versus 1.4 there was there were some studies done on that um you know i i guess i a ballpark figure people throw out is like a thousand transactions a second, that type of thing. Uh, maybe less if you're using CouchDB. Couch does have uh, an impact on your performance. So if you don't need to use JSON query, uh, then you're probably better off sticking with LevelDB and you'll get better performance on that. What James says, he has managed to get about a thousand transactions per second with LevelDB, 800 for CouchDB. Yeah, that's in the ballpark that we tend to hear about. Yeah. There's a few things uh, you know we've got on the roadmap to help with that a little bit, especially around private data. I know there's some additional constraints on private data um, that can be opened up a little bit. And then when it comes to performance, there's also a trade-off, right? I mean, uh, so there was the there were university was it Waterloo? who did this like extensive analysis of Fabric and uh, they came to us saying, hey guys, how about we increase, you know, the speed of uh, Fabric by a factor of, you know, seven or something like pretty amazing. But they did that to the extent where they were breaking down even further the different uh, uh, components they have. And there was clearly, uh, you know, added complexity and there's a point where you need to be able to say, well, is that really worth it? How far do I want to go? Because, you know, you may gain in performance, but on the other hand, you make things much easier to manage. And so it's not a freebie. We yeah, there's a, there a little bit more low-hanging fruit from what they've identified, yeah. uh, that we could do some more refactoring within the peer itself uh, to get a little bit more out of that. Uh, but yeah, the the way they really got it high was by breaking the peer into multiple components and having it more distributed, and that's something we weren't we were not quite ready to tackle that yet. Right, we did get some uh, good input though. I mean, there was some caching and stuff like that that were added that uh, led to performance improvement. So that was good. Yeah. And time. Time already. We're out of time, but um, if there's any final questions, we could take them. We've been told that this is the last session of the day, so we can cheat a little bit on the end of the session. If anybody has a burning question, we're happy to stick around a bit. Yes, David Boswell is saying we're not running into anything, so. I think I've lost my audio again. I cannot hear still, but I'll try to it's all right. unplug my USB and plug it back in, but I might be gone. Okay, Dave has had some challenge and he, he, the sound was a little bit garbled at times, but for the most part it worked fine. So hopefully you all found this uh, session useful. Are you back, Dave? Can you hear me? Yeah, that worked. That worked. I can hear you again. All right. So I think we can leave it at this for today. Thank you all for joining us. I hope you find it useful. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.